action. This is Obi with Rob Organics, bringing you another episode of Organic Vegetable Gardening, where we learn to be better gardeners. This episode, we're going to talk about micronutrients to follow up on our general talk about plant nutrition. Our focus on micronutrients, as always as organic gardeners, is going to come in the context of how micronutrients affect the different microbes in the soil and on our plant surfaces. Uh, the first thing that I want to say about micronutrients is that they don't get enough attention in conventional agriculture and from conventional gardeners. Most people only really apply nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium to their plants. They usually don't apply the other macronutrients and they very rarely, if ever, apply any straight micronutritional supplement. Micronutrients are really important because there's a law of plant growth that basically says that <coughs> there's a proportion that all nutrients are required in and if you have your nutrients out of proportion any one nutrient out of proportion bottlenecks your plant growth and your total plant control okay. uh, and any one nutrient out of proportion can bottleneck your total plant growth uh, and so that means that we need to have an adequate supply of all sorts of nutrients and micronutrients and trace minerals for our plants to pull from so that we make sure that we don't have any trace uh, nutrients creating bottlenecks with our plant growth and ruining our crops. No matter how much nitrogen you put down, if you don't have enough boron for certain plants, your plants are going to fail. Uh, a lot of people don't realize things like that. There are 15 total nutrients, uh, or micronutrients, I believe, that uh, plant biologists recognize as being important for plant growth. Um, but I want to say that more than that, are important and that we don't understand how they're important and more specifically that that statement that there's only 15 or 21 total nutrients that you need to provide for a plant is only in the context of plants that's not in the context of a microbial community which might be necessary for your plant to really thrive and that you might need to put down some trace minerals and certain micro elements uh, for your microbial communities that your plants aren't specifically using. So these are some important things I want to keep in mind. Uh, so the foundation of a good micronutritional program is a good quality compost. This is what I believe to be the best soil that money could buy or a person could make. This is what's advertised by the company Microbial Earth as microbial castings. Um, but the I guess the name, if you wanted to Google about it and find out more information about it, would be controlled microbial compost. It's a specific composting method that puts out a compost that has between 12 to 16 times as many uh, bacteria and fungi as your traditional compost, or as what you could buy in a bag, as a premium bagged compost. This stuff is incredible. Words can't describe how important good compost is for your soil. Uh, this compost is made by turning it daily and, and it has multiple uh, parameters that are measured such as oxygen content, temperature, and moisture content and it's turned anytime any of those approach the limits of the parameters and every time it's turned it's inoculated but, uh, with these liquid sprays that contain certain bacteria and fungi that do various things and the end result is that this is not just compost but this is humus compost. This is compost that has not just decomposed, but has been recomposed, reconstituted into humus. Humus is a particular texture, it's a particular polymer of soil that is created by microbial action responding to uh, a certain amount of clay. And it has to do with the electrical, uh, the electrical charges and the magnetic charges that exist between the clay particles and the microbes. What it produces is a beautiful textured soil that makes little pellets, little BBs of soil. Those little pellets and BBs are the bound up organic matter that is humus. It's not organic matter, it's what's left over after highly, de uh, highly decomposed organic matter has been worked over by certain microbes. Normally it takes decades or centuries to produce humus and it's usually only made uh, on the forest floor. Some people say worms make humus, but I, I have to honestly say that I'm not sold on that yet, and I need to see a little bit more science myself. Uh, humus, this kind of compost, was designed by microbiologists from Austria, the Lubkes, L-U-E-B-K-E. -E. You can look up the Lubke method on Google.
to learn more about how to make this compost. Um, one important thing about this compost is that it's made with between 10 and 20 percent by volume trace minerals. And that's one of the reasons why it has such an abundance of microorganisms is the trace minerals. That's an important thing to consider is that trace minerals are a necessary part of really thriving organic soil. Think about the best soils in the world. Uh, in my mind, I immediately think to Alaska. I think to forest floors. But the Alaskan soil in particular, and what the Alaskan soil has going for it are two things. It has volcanic ash. It has all the volcanoes from the mountains in Alaska. And then it also has a salmon run. The salmon run deposits lots of macronutrients. It deposits tons of proteins uh, from the blood of the salmon. It also deposits lots of phosphorus from the bones. Uh, and the volcanic ash deposits pretty much everything else, uh, which is fabulous. Uh, it has really nice texture in the soil, and there's no bottleneck that limits the size that the plants can grow, which is why their plants look like dinosaur plants. Um, the, best macro, the best micronutrient supplement uh, that I can think of is a product called Azomite. This is the bottle. You can see A-Z-O-M-I-T-E. Azomite means A to Z of minerals, including trace elements. This is a mined mineral that's mined from a mineral deposit in Utah. Uh, it is OMRI certified. It's a good organic, uh, organically mined mineral. And uh, it contains something between 60 and 80 trace elements and micronutrients. These uh, are not in super available forms that are immediately available to the plant, but they are in forms that are immediately available to the biology in the soil, unlike some other rock dusts. Some rock dusts can take decades to be broken down, uh, but I, and I wouldn't recommend using those because of that time frame unless you're a farmer. Uh, instead, I would recommend using a product like Azomite, which is going to last for potentially uh, a year or two, but it's going to be creating immediate changes within your soil uh, microbial community. Um, you can put down azomite at any application rate and it won't burn your plants. That's an important thing to remember. Uh, azomite can be micronized like this. This azomite is turned into a powder, as you can see. Uh, sometimes azomite can also be prilled into little pellets that can be spread using the spreader. I would recommend adding azomite for every crop uh, until you took a soil test after four or five years and it told you that you had plenty of trace minerals. Trace minerals are expensive to test for in your soil. A product like Azomite has no dangerous trace minerals, no dangerous imbalances, not too much sodium or anything like that. I recommend using Azomite at the recommended rates every single year for uh, every season for every crop. Uh, if you need an immediate source of micronutrients. If your plants are just looking blah, or maybe you're just finding out about the importance of micronutrients and you're wondering, well, why, why aren't my plants doing better today? Uh, one thing that you can do to create an overnight change in your plants is apply sea salt. Here I've got a bag of C90 fertilizer. This is produced by Sea Agri in Georgia, and it is sea salt. It's a specific sea salt. It's not like Morton. This isn't something that you would sprinkle on your food. This sea salt contains, the reason why it's called C90 is because it contains between at least 90 uh, of the different minerals that are in the ocean. Um, ocean minerals are in a particular balance, and that balance is contained within ocean mineral products. Ocean minerals are in a balance that is usually very good for life. One thing that a lot of us don't realize is that after tsunamis come through uh, certain agricultural locations, they can have years of bumper crops following the, uh, that tsunami. And the reason is because that tsunami washed up lots of sea minerals onto the land, uh, which was then able to go into their plants and uh, solve the issues with trace minerals creating bottlenecks in their plant growth. Sea salt, being a salt, is immediately plant available. That's really important to remember. You can burn your plants with sea salt. Sea salt, you're in, in, let me say this, you're in immediate danger of burning your plants with sea salt if you use it beyond the recommended rates. Do not overdose plants with sea salt by any stretch of the imagination. It's not like azomite. 
Uh, I recommend spraying sea salt foliar. I recommend with azomite you can do either you can put it in the soil, which is really what I recommend, or you can get a form that can be sprayed in a liquid. But with sea salt, I don't recommend putting it on the soils, especially not in Texas. Sea salt uh, contains a high percentage of sodium, not nearly as much as table salt or the sea salt that you would buy, like Morton sea salt, uh, because those are just sodium chloride. Those have been rinsed. The water has washed through them, and since sea salt is immediately uh, water soluble, when water washes through salt, it washes away all of the nutrients and it leaves behind only the bulk, which is sodium chloride, which is really a poison. It's not good for people, it's not good for plants, it's not good for the soil. Uh, sea salt, however, contains the nutrients of the sea and the correct balance that can promote life. Uh, when applied at the recommended rates, it's a good product and it contains lots of micronutrients. Apply it as a foliar spray and you can see an overnight change in your plants. People have tested with the BRICS meters and other forms of testing plant health, and you can see an overnight change that's dramatic uh, by an application of sea salt. So that's something that's good to remember, uh, but I, I don't recommend using it in Texas on your soil or as a soil drench because we have alkaline soils and the sodium in the sea salt will add to the alkaline nature of our already uh, alkaline soils. That's it for the top, or I guess the other topic for micronutrients, the last topic that I want to cover for micronutrients are just some of the main ones that you'll see advertised. Uh, iron is an important micronutrient for your lawn because it makes your lawn nice and green. Uh, and it's an important for your garden and your flowers because it makes them beautiful. It adds a richness of color. Good sources of nitrogen are milorganite, which has fortified nitrogen. It's up to 4% nitrogen. Uh, and also molasses, blackstrap molasses. Uh, is the only kind of molasses to use for agriculture and it contains a few percent uh, of iron depending on this on the specific molasses that's it for this topic on micronutrients thanks for joining us for this episode of organic vegetable gardening we'll see you again next week